All right, here we go again. Um, beautiful, that's the Isle of Arran. That's Holy Island or Holly Island. I had a great night's kip. There's no internet though. Uh, although to be fair, I would have had a great night's kip wherever I was because I was out like a light. I was knackered. Um, right, I'm just gonna go and get the anchor up. Engine's warmed up pretty much. We're away to go, off to Rue Marina, uh, 30 miles, 6 hours, maybe a bit more, depends, uh, I've got a bit of weed on the bottom, so not a euphemism, yeah, I'll just get the anchor up, I'll not bother filming it, and uh, we'll get on our way, should be some nice scenery today, hopefully, right, let's get to it, that was atrocious, the anchor was full of seaweed, I had to pull it up, that's about a 20 metres. It was not a fun time at all. But, in gear, away we go. I'll speak when I've got my breath back. Bye bye, Aaron. All good fun. This entire place is like something out of a dream. It is utterly beguiling. I don't think you'll see like the hills and the stuff just partially hidden by the mist. And, oh my god. It is simply stunning. Utterly, utterly stunning. I would like to be here in a 4 6. But like this, this is gorgeous. Uh, so I don't know if you can see the two land masses there, I'm going up between those. Uh, it's approximately due north from here, it'll take me to the leftmost one. Uh, and then I'll just hug that coast up because it'll probably be more scenic than going up the middle. Um, I've got to download offline charts, so I'm winging it. Uh, I know where I'm going. Why did none of you tell me that I didn't have my life jacket and my PLB on? Oh, I decided to put the sails up. Uh, I'm down at maybe 30% of the RPM of cruising revs uh, and doing the same speed, so I've got some drive out of them. But without the sails, I'm doing two knots, so... Um, yeah, I got up at the mast and I'm hoisting the mainsail. I'm like, something feels different. Like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I looked around and I'm like, oh, that water's probably cold. <laughs> <laughs> Back down, get it on. <laughs> yeah, we're doing all right. I'm just playing with sail trim, looking at the little stringy things up there, trying to get them flying and different things. It's a the wind's a bit changeable. As soon as I got the sails up, it died completely. It's coming back a little touch now. Um, but yeah, we'll see how we go for the day. Doing 4.7, 4.8 knots. Um, That'll get me there, maybe 6 p.m., something like that, is where it is. Right, back to it. When I say uh, when I say you can see wind on the water, you can probably see an example of it here. So this is all flat glass calm, and you see the slight ripples there that are coming towards me. Uh, they're coming towards me a lot quicker than I'm going, so that's wind on the water. Um, so as we go through that, the wind will pick up ever so slightly. It probably looks like about three knots of wind, so it's not much, but that's the essence of being able to see the gusts and the wind on the water and know what's coming and, and stuff like that. Uh, we should be in it in a couple of minutes, so you'll be able to see it better. More than a couple of minutes. That's the basics of it. Well, it's been an hour or two, I don't even know. Uh, Aaron is back behind us there still. This on the left is the Isle of Butte. This on the right is a place. Um, one thing I've noticed is the water is absolutely teeming with life. I don't think they'll show up on the camera. Um, but there aren't any here now typical uh, but there were thousands and thousands of small jellyfish and then like hundreds of medium jellyfish and then the odd big 
beast of a jellyfish. <laughs> I couldn't think of a word then. Uh, I've put the headsail away, the sails are doing nothing at the minute. It is completely flat calm as you can see. Um, so yeah, just chilling out. I've rang the marina. They're actually really busy this week. I said, have you got a berth for a week? He's like, ooh, <laughs> we've got some championships and we're practically full. I'm like, I'm pretty pleased. Uh, I didn't actually say pretty please, he's just like, oh hang on, let me figure something out and then came back with a berth for me, so that's alright. Uh, Echo 22, I think he said. So, just plod on. I'm going to skirt the right hand side of this uh, uh, to the right hand side of a uh, the shipping, the main shipping route down here. Uh, one of which you can see on its way in over yonder. Uh, it's quite a busy route, so what I'll do is I'll just say uh, I'll just stay to the starboard side of the starboard lateral markers. Blah, blah, blah. Um, because they're not really for me. I've, I've just been over the um, over the entire route at a high zoom level on uh, the Orca, and there's absolutely nothing in the area to that side that is going to cause me an issue. So that is what I shall do. Um, and then I'm out of everybody's way. I'm doing a posh. Put me cone on. So, DCW said to me once, I think he was DCW, um, do you know what a downward facing cone hung off the starboard spreader means? I said, yeah, it means that you're motor sailing. He's like, no, it means that there's an RYA examiner on board because <laughs> nobody uses them unless there is. But I bought one, so I'm going to bloody use it. Um, I'm being a good boy. Yeah, it's bloody roasting. Not much more to say, really. It's plodding on. Don't know if you can see the big lad behind me. He's on his way in, so I'm making sure that I am outside of the marked channely bit, doodad ready for him to come. I think I've already said this. Have I already said this? I might have said it. Basically I'm going to stay the hell out of his way. Jez knows how to ruin a day. I've just been speaking to him on the phone. He said basically, I've screwed the pooch. I've not got time to do the trip uh, because of the September gales in the North Sea. So I'm assessing things, but we'll see. I've got a ship, a little boat coming across. Uh, so I'm the stand on vessel. We'll see what he does because he's on a constant bearing at the minute. So he needs to go one way or the other. Turning to go behind me, really. I think he's beginning to turn. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I'm going to have to reassess. Uh, have a think, basically. See what happens. There is an increased risk of summer ga of gales in September. Doesn't necessarily mean there is, but you know the other option. The only option is to turn around from here and go south and miss out Newcastle and, and do it by car. But that's not good, is it? That's, I'm not doing a circumnavigation then. I don't know. If I can get to Newcastle. Worst case scenario is I went to the boat in Newcastle. I don't want to do that, but I don't know. We'll see. Still uh, chugging along. There's a seaplane that keeps going by. That's quite cool. Uh, there's a huge oil tanker on its way out called London Pride. 274 meters. That'll be cool coming past. I'm trying to be jolly. A um, couple of hours left. I am basically, there's a jetty here and then just up where that, there's a white doodad on the corner over yon. Uh, after that I'll turn off up that way, swing a right, swing a left and with a, um, yeah I need to assess things, we'll sort it out. Um, yeah looking forward to it, this scenery is like something out of a film, it is utterly stunning here utterly stunning um, it's just gorgeous this is this is without a doubt the greatest journey to a marina that I have done so far without a shadow of a doubt it's uh, it's just epic and you've got the don't know what those big hills are called in the background there'll be a name for them uh, those sort of appearing slowly out of the haze and the mist and oh god it's epic naturally you can't see any of this because I'm not going to zoom my camera but believe me when I say it is epic right onwards and onwards so I've just done a little bit of weaving uh, not really much there's a ferry coming out that way there's one going that way. Um, I went around the back of him and the stand-on vessel, but and it looked like he was going to go across the front of me anyway. But I didn't know if he had to slow down before he got uh, got in. So I just did a 30-degree turn to uh, turn to port to make damn sure he got well in fr across in front of me, even if uh, even if he did slow down. Not skin off my nose. I'm still heading the right direction-ish. I've uh, got a sailboat coming towards us under sail. So if I wasn't motoring, I'd be the stand-on vessel because I'm on a starboard tack uh, and he's on a port tack. So the wind's coming from my starboard, the wind's coming from his port. So starboard tack is a stand-on vessel um, in this scenario. Uh, it's irrelevant because I'm motoring, I've got my cone up, so he should know that oh, we're not going to be anywhere near each other. but. If we were, he's a stand-on vessel. I have actually got a bit of wind now. I'm just round the corner from where I'm going, so I'm debating whether to put the headsail up or not. We'll see. So, nearly there. About an hour to go, 50 minutes. Uh, so there's a big port down there. Down there is the River Clyde and uh, Glasgow and all the famous shipbuilding places. Uh, and actually, where we go up to the marina is the Gairlock, which is where the submarines and everything are get stuff done to them with, for the Navy. Uh, they have American submarines come up here often as well. Uh, hopefully, I'll get to see one, but. I may only be here a couple of days, depends on time scale. But yeah, looking forward to getting there. Been a lot of motoring, obviously, motor sailing, but is where it is. Get there, get me tea, get my feet up. Whew, all right, we are there. This is Rue Marina. This is the 
Southern hand marker boy that we need to make sure we go on the right side of. There's a man on a paddleboard. Uh, got our berth, it's there somewhere. E22. Was it E22? I'll double check. Uh, yeah. I will. I've got the 360 going, so hopefully that'll get me coming in. Um, yeah, I'll see you when I'm in. Alright, we're away. Um, yeah, so E22, so Boat Folk Marina, they release uh, a PDF of the Marina plan and stuff like that, a lot of places do. So E22 is here, uh, paying particular attention, easy for you to say, to this um, marker boy here, which you need to make sure you go around the outside of. And you can just see there that there are uh, mooring boys all outside as well, which are also owned by the marina, which I think are long-term berths. Uh, coming around, this is sped up four times by the way. Coming around now, so this is a floating breakwater that they have, a big concrete floating breakwater, uh, which is pretty cool. It has got cleats on it, I don't think you're allowed to uh, moor up to it though. I'm now hunting down my space. Oh, I waved to a kayak. I was wondering who I waved to. Coming into a marina is definitely the most stressful part of uh, of boating for me. Without a shadow, well, apart from getting fenders in and out, because I hate that as well. Right, space is spotted, and it is what is called an outside berth or inside. It's one of the berths. It's the one that you don't want. Uh, which means that, um, slow it down now so we can actually do it. Uh, you can see the wind is blowing me off ever so slightly. Um, and what I mean by an outside or inside berth, whichever one it is, it means that if I was where the boat next to me is, I could drive straight into there and the momentum of the boat, the direction that I'm going, will take me against that pontoon. Whereas if I try to just turn the corner and go into this berth, the momentum of my boat is pushing me from right to left. So that's why I've come out, stopped the boat, got rid of any momentum and come past the berth a little bit. And then I'll motor into the berth so that my momentum is putting me towards the berth rather than uh, bringing me off of it. That's the plan. That's the theory. Um, and we'll put it into practice. So nice and slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race or slow is pro as they say. Uh, and what I have is a, a breast line ready and set up. Look at this, I tell you what, sometimes I almost look, look like I know what I'm doing. Get a breast line onto the first available cleat. I have a hole in my t shirt. And then I put it onto uh, my winch. And then what I can do is motor forwards into that and it will create a spring for me. And then I can adjust my position in the finger by letting out or taking in um, some of the breast line. So you see me just pay some out and I'm, I think I've locked the tiller over to one side or other. I can't remember. I'm looking at this on a very small screen. And I'm just easing out that breast line until I'm happy with the position on the dock. and make it off and now I'm springing into that line uh, with the engine in ahead and the boat will effectively sit there all day secured against the dock um, and won't go anywhere and that's basically how I come alongside I've got all day now to step off the boat the boat's secured uh, nothing can go anywhere uh, what I don't want to do and which I'm uh, dead against is to get alongside the finger pontoon and grab a line and then step off onto the dock. Uh, I saw somebody do it in Portland, uh, they stepped off, tripped on a cleat and they were man overboard solo on their boat, stuck between the boat and the finger pontoon and it's too easily done so if you can get yourself secure and stable um, from a safe position on the boat then do it that way. So yeah, grab a bow line, get tied up, blah de blah de blah job is a good one.
occasionally, that's how you do that. It's nice to get alongside and not cock it up. Um, yeah, I was quite proud of that one. It went all right. Um, yeah, so that's that for this week. Uh, it was a beautiful day. Looking back on it now, I mean, as I sit here, that's a couple of months ago. Um, and I've had some pretty gnarly experiences in the North Sea. And uh, maybe somewhere else that I definitely might have not got to yet or might have done. Uh, including engine failure uh, 35 miles offshore so obviously I'm still alive I'm still here so yeah it's nice looking back on sunshiny beautiful days like that uh, and remembering why why I'm doing it so yeah room arena uh, I'll do a video tour coming up of that one uh, at some point um, yeah so I'm knackered by the way thank you very much for watching and catch you again hopefully It is something o'clock. A good old fashioned blows coming through. All the rigging howling and how you bang in. My boat's actually being blown around. I mean, you can see the water's actually flat calm. We put the breakwater in the right place. But yeah, I'm going to go and have a little look at my lines just in case. Oh, and then go back to bed. Oh, I've not been woken up by wind for a long time. Oh. <laughs>